This is the Striving Butterfly Podcast. Hello, my name's Colleen. Welcome to my podcast, The Striving Butterfly. This is episode two. Some may think this is episode three. However, the very first pod that you see is actually the introduction where I set the scene on how I got here. Now, if you've missed the introduction and the first official episode, then I encourage you to hit pause right now and go back and just listen to the introduction first where I set the scene and prepare you for what's to come and then on the very first episode where we start on this journey. Now, if you've listened to those already, welcome back and thank you for joining me again. I gotta say, it's been so overwhelming, the reviews and the feedback you guys have really just made me feel encouraged to know that I'm doing the right thing. I was so hesitant. Um, and, you know, you know when you battle with yourself on, is this right? Am I doing the right thing? Should I be doing this? But the feedback just from friends, new friends, churchgoers, um, People who I've just met along the way has been very encouraging to let me know, one, I'm not alone, I'm not crazy, and two, that I can be the voice for you when you're still in doubt about what you're doing, where you're going, and if you're making the right decisions. Now, if you've got to episode three, I'm just going to let you know, you're making the right decisions. Whatever it is that you're thinking, whatever you took from the last two episodes, well, the introduction and the first episode, whatever it is that you are still dwelling on, whatever it is that is still holding you back. If you filled out the handout and you just were really trying to, mm, I don't know what I'm going to put in this box or actually there's nothing I can put in this box because I don't actually know. Do the digging, make the decision and go for it. It can't go wrong. I'm telling you, it can't go wrong. You can trip, but we all trip. I'm telling you. But what happens? We get back up. We dust ourselves off and we go again. So before we get into this episode, make sure you've got a drink or something nice, whatever it is your preference. You're sitting somewhere cozy, somewhere where you can just chill out for a moment. If your preference is to listen to this in the shower, in the car, on your headphones, on the tube, wherever it is, just ride along with me, hit pause if you need to, make sure you've got a notepad or something to jot any notes down and if you need to take a moment, take the moment and if a flood of thoughts hit your mind, jot it down, don't ignore it. So in the feedback that I was getting back, A lot of it was thanking me on my transparency and how open I was. But there was also feedback on how do I feel about being so open? How do I feel about sharing so much? You know, don't you feel weak? That people might see you now as someone who's weak or timid? when you're supposed to be Miss Hardface. <laughs> well, that leads me on to this theme for this episode, which is vulner- 
vulnerability. Vulnerability. <laughs> Woo, who loves that word? None of us. <laughs> so do you dare to be vulnerable? For many of us who has experienced some form of trauma, childhood trauma, where we've learned to avoid emotional vulnerability, as that may have been our survival tactic. It was mine because being a naturally quiet child, I was a bookworm. I loved reading. I love a TV, but I love reading. I love being in my own little private space because there's some parts of me that didn't always think that I fitted in. My dad, I was super close. I'm super close with my dad. Like, literally, I used to live in his armpit where my dad was. I was. So when my dad weren't around as well, I just used to do a retreat to my room and read. I loved reading. I loved creating stories and imaginary worlds. You know, the Magic Faraway Tree was one of my favorite childhood books to the point that I actually purchased it for my daughter and read it to her. <laughs> but yeah, being that naturally quiet child, feeling so different, then having a teen pregnancy and firsthand witnessing my parents getting divorced and feeling like I had to be that rock. I picked up learning not to dwell on emotional pain. I learned to be able to suppress it and push it down. I've learned to dodge and erase and to quit whenever I feel that the heat is on me or there's something that I'm unsure about and I can't get to the bottom of it. That has caused me to be closed off, unaccessible to many. And not knowing even myself how to be vulnerable with those that are my nearest and dearest and those I would call my bona fide. You may think I am being vulnerable now on this channel. You may look at my social media and think, oh, rah, she's well out there, well expressive. But all I've really done is shown you snippets and that's what I used to have in my bio on my social this is just snippets of my life this is where I'm just being open to snippets of my life and you got to know that being open and expressive is completely different to being vulnerable the two can be muddled up and blended and I've definitely done it <laughs> Being open is disclosing information intentionally. So I'm just telling you what I want you to know. <laughs> and that can be with just a few people. It doesn't have to be with the world. It's just a few people I'm being open with. I'm letting you know stuff that other people don't know. I'm letting you feel that, you know, I am to myself feel like I'm being vulnerable but we're not going to use that word I'm just going to say I'm being open I'm telling you stuff you know anything that's going to make someone feel like "Ooh, I feel special she told me that but that's not being vulnerable I think I've only truly allowed myself to be vulnerable in the presence of my closest people in the last two to three years because I've learned it's a sacrifice of comfort of my ego it's opening myself up to allow someone to take advantage of my vulnerability take a moment to think have you truly allowed yourself to be vulnerable around people you call your nearest and dearest. Deep it. 
Have you been vulnerable or with the relationships that you call the most important relationships to you? Are you vulnerable with your children? Are you vulnerable with your friends? I'm not talking about your colleagues at work. Put that to the side. That I'm talking about those you class as your friends. Are you vulnerable with your partner? Whew. It's not about just sharing information. It's allowing you to be open enough. Like I said... To let your ego go. To give all of yourself. Openly. Like. And I'm saying being vulnerable as well. You would have heard. I didn't say family. Or mum, dad, auntie, uncle. Because I think you have to also be careful. And use wisdom when you're being vulnerable and we all have different relationships with different family members so use wisdom when you are being vulnerable but I think it's really important that we know how to be vulnerable I think I truly learned to be vulnerable first with my faith and just trusting that if I give it all onto God, it's all going to be okay. Like, could I really have conversations out loud and not feel judged and not feel that they're going to retreat and not like me no more or not be friends with me no more or think she's not on my level. She's not as pretty as I thought she was because now she's just spared herself to me. So I remember I started being vulnerable in my faith when I was trying to get my house. And I was thinking, why isn't this happening? Is this going to happen? Can it possibly happen? You know, I'm on my own didn't have the best credit my salary was okay my bonus made it better but god is this gonna happen if you're not if you don't follow any faith it might be a little bit different for you but for me being transparent in my faith and having that true conversation with god and just letting it all out and handing it over to him is what allowed me to then be able to make the next step with the closest people to me because by me outpouring to him it just allowed me to know actually there's rewards from giving it all on to him so there must be a reward if i'm vulnerable with those that I actually do trust my life with. So when I figured that out, and you have to think, it took me a while. (laughs) When I actually figured that out, I saw that my wings slowly opened up a bit wider. They weren't so close to my chest anymore. You know, there was a different glow now that I've learned to be vulnerable. But I tell you something, those little steps, why? It's like I walked out naked in public. And this is just having a conversation with my closest. It's like I'm standing there naked in front of my friend, just bearing my all. And I'm actually not, but that's how I feel. Like, oh my gosh, this is me. This is all me. And, you know, when you are vulnerable, it's like saying, here I am. Do you accept me for who I am? Do you accept me for what I've just told you? Do you accept me for what I've done? Do you accept and still love me with all the broken pieces (laughs) that I'm still trying to figure out and piece back together? Like, being able to do that with someone is different than just being open. 
being able to share your inner feelings and thoughts, being able to be expressive and communicate how you feel, whatever that feeling or emotion may be. Like, I still feel awkward when I'm being vulnerable. It feels like I stuck my finger in a pot of cold jelly and you know when it just wiggles, it's like it literally sends a shiver up my body. However, I've seen the benefits of being vulnerable, right? My friends trust me and I trust them. I've got a small pool of friends, but you know, I've noticed being that little bit more open and vulnerable, I've seen them do the same with me because it's like, Ra, Colleen, you actually trust me because you never share that information. So if you're sharing that and you're deep in that with me, I can do the same. And I'm, I'm saying this out loud and I can just see my closest ones, the conversations that we have and what we share back and forth. And you know what? It has really strengthened our relationship. And these are my friendships And this is also with my partner and my mother and my father. The last couple of years has really shifted my relationships with my friends and my family because I've learned what vulnerability is and I've learned to allow them in and I've learned to be more expressive and I've learned to own who I am. And through that, it's like, We're just in a different season, a season of growth and development, a season of transformation, a season of knowing that we're elevating and going to another level, whatever that looks like in our relationship and in our friendship. And I love it. I love it because I didn't know what that felt like before. And I am big, big of age, but learning this level and being able to experience this level of vulnerability has actually strengthened my relationship, strengthened my faith and it strengthened my relationship with my daughter, my mother, my partner and my closest friends. Now you're most probably listening to this thinking that's good for you isn't it? Like that works for you but I don't know. I don't even know what vulnerability looks like for me I actually don't know because I don't even sit down and take a moment to think of all that I've gone through to sit am I actually going to share that with somebody do I actually want to like I talk to God yeah and I tell him and I don't but I don't actually say it all out because he knows isn't it (laughs) and then it's like I told my friends stuff. They can get the gist. They see my life. They see what I go through. And my partner, well, I'm not sure if he's going to stick around. So why am I telling him everything? I'm just saying to you, why not? Why not let someone truly know you so they can give you everything that you need at whatever time it is that you need it? Because they know based on this, based on that, I'm going to support my friend, my partner, my child, my loved one with whatever it is that they need. Like as a friend, you just want the best for your friend. You want to strengthen your relationship. You want to improve your relationship. You want to be able to be a support mechanism for them. You want to be able to guide them through some of what they're going through because you never know what you've gone through, they've gone through. So being vulnerable with your own experience is going to allow them to be vulnerable with you, meaning the two of you can join together, support each other through whatever you're experiencing and going through at this moment in time. And, you know, you may feel that there's no reason for me to do this right now because we're good. Like, life is good so there's no need but well how I started or and how I what I still do now is because I've always liked reading and writing I use that as my gateway to be expressive so I write everything out like crazy I've got 
notepads galore if you see my office I've got notepads galore notes on my phone I've got good notes like whatever sort of notepad gadget anything I'm there I'm writing in it I'm writing in it whatever emotions that I feel whatever prayers that I do I just jot it all down so when I usually take my holidays it's my moment whenever I go on a flight so whenever I do like my solo trips or a big big trip away where I've got time to just de-stress and relax and just be free whenever I get on the plane I just do like a brain dump of everything that I'm feeling everything that I'm feeling just to get it all out so when I get off the plane I'm like whoo I done that I'm ready to enjoy my holiday um so even when I'm going through mixed emotions at home and as women sometimes we go through emotions and we can't even understand what it is we're going through so we don't even know how to explain it to somebody else because we don't get it ourselves I write it out and then based on what I'm writing out I'll look at look back at it and think before I used to just write it close it most of the time I then elevated to write it say a little prayer with it and close it I I've elevated myself now I've moved to the next level um and now I write it I may write a little prayer in my book and then I look at it and say based on what I'm writing who am I going to share this with based on what I'm feeling right now what do I need to do and sometimes I do the most random of things and people most will be like oh okay Colleen but that's my step and if they're listening to it they'll be like okay now I get it (laughs) but that's my step of feeling like I am being vulnerable and it allows me to slowly slowly and and it has allowed me to slowly slowly be more expressive so I may message my friends some random stuff like um I love you um or just wish you all the best um any sort of anything that I'm feeling sometimes if I feel like my communication is bad if I feel like I've had a conversation and it hasn't gone well based on my behavior um, before I would very much just keep it confined to myself now I'm just learning to be vulnerable with my actions which are sometimes mistakes that I've made and I've bottled in but now I am being vulnerable enough to take responsibility that maybe that wasn't right maybe that behavior is not what you should do and hold myself accountable for when I've made mistakes and there's a level of vulnerability where you need to know how to check yourself and allow others to be able to check you and not get your back up completely because sometimes we need to self-evaluate so I use it as a step to be checked but I also use it as a step to strengthen my relationship so there's notes that I send to my friends and just seek some advice because before I've been really really private with my relationships now I now I give a bit more just to make sure that I'm doing things correctly because I don't always make the right choice I don't always say the right thing because my tongue is sharp so now I've learned to very much be more expressive and vulnerable with my feelings and emotions and doing that with my best friend has allowed me to do that more with my partner now my partner's boy have I made mistakes in my relationships Now, I have thought I have been vulnerable, but I was just being open. I only shared what I wanted to share. Like my previous relationship, I learned a bit of vulnerability because I wanted to make it different. And it was really, really late in our relationship where we learned to be vulnerable with each other. But it took a long, long time, Um, a very, very long time. So... And it, when we got there, it was great. But in my new relationship, I said, you know what? Don't let it take you so long to be vulnerable. Don't 
let it take you so long to say what you want, to put your cards, to put your heart on the line. I'm that person who very much felt you knew my feelings because you saw me and I told you and we did things together. But actually, it was the reverse because I wasn't expressive. I kept what I wanted to inside at the fear of thinking he's not feeling the same way. He don't like me like that. So why am I going to say X, Y and Z when he ain't said X, Y and Z? No, fam, I'm going to wait for him. So in my new relationship and in the new version of me, there's a couple of things from my last relationship. I thought I need to make a change. Because if I'm honest, I thought my last relationship, that was it. Like, I found him, nothing else. We didn't quite work out. So I went through a lot in my head to figure out what did I do wrong in that? What it, what can I take onus for? Because I'm not perfect. And us as women, sometimes we try and make out that it's never us, it's always them. But I have to take ownership over the things that I did wrong so when I've come out of that and a new relationship starts to birth I had to make some and have some serious conversations with myself to try and understand what mistakes are you not going to make in this one do you truly know yourself you're in your 40s you can't be doing this again so what have you learned what are you about to change and what are you going to do differently? Like outside of speaking with my closest who were so supportive, um, my bestie and her fiance were literally my rock, um, really helped me a lot. And away from them, I decided that I'm going to get myself an empowerment coach and learning a bit more about myself learning to write and be transparent about exactly what it is that I want in a relationship and what it is that I want from a partner and what it is I want from my life and my future. I learned that moving forward with my relationship with my parents, with my relationship with my new partner and even my relationships, I'm going to be much more transparent and open and vulnerable not completely bare but vulnerable when you learn the true meaning of vulnerability you know how to apply it you know how to move the gauge depending on who it is and where you are so in all of that I'm learning to say exactly what it is that I want to say exactly how I'm feeling, to own my emotions and just go for exactly what it is that I want and be transparent with whoever it is that is on the receiving line of what it is I am going for. Whether it is I'm happy, I'm sad, I don't feel so great, I need support, I made a mistake, actually I want to progress in this job. Actually, I want a bigger team. Actually, I'm going for the top. Saying, owning, speaking them out has allowed me to take off all the guards and says, here I am. This is what I can do. This is what I have to offer. Yes, it feels awkward. Yes, I may be rejected. But you know what? I don't have nothing to lose. I literally have nothing to lose. I've experienced rejection before. I've experienced loss. I've made so many mistakes. Like, I've been private, very, very private most of my life. So you know what? I'm going to flip the script. If I'm going to be rejected, it cannot be worse than what I've already gone through. So if I hear no, okay, maybe it just wasn't the right time. Maybe I need to do something different. Maybe that wasn't the right season for me. Maybe that wasn't the right person for me. I've made a mistake. Own it. Apologize. 
make yourself accountable for the mistakes that you've made Colleen and don't just be like okay whatever and be quiet about it own it so you can move on and learn from it don't be so private be open so whoever you're with feels feels like they can be open with you strengthen the relationship and don't just take it for surface level there's more of you so there's way more of them like it just builds and strengthens what you have everyone has experienced shame fear loss so when you're going through and experiencing those feelings Colleen don't think it's only you that is going through it we all have so offload so we can help and sometimes you just have to let it go whatever has burnt you whatever has stung you whatever has made you think I am not doing that again I'm not sharing that again I'm not going there again let it go it was too long ago for it to hinder everything that you've got ahead of you because when you let it go and when you learn to just be free trust me you learn to love yourself even more and all aspects of yourself so what does that do it improves your confidence so you'd be like yeah here I am (laughs) and then for those who are around you It improves your communication in your relationships and also the intimacy that you have. So that's tick, tick, tick. So why wouldn't you want to be vulnerable? It's scary. It's so, so scary. But if you take the step, watch how the colours in your wings brighten and see the amount of people that now see those colours that you dimmed and turn around and say to you, I love this version of you. I didn't even know this about you, but this just allows me to feel so much closer to you, so much confident that I want this. And that can be with your friends, that can be with your family, that can be with your partner. Like, and I'm not talking about, no, when I say partner, I'm not talking about, I'm not going to use the waste man word. I'm not talking about someone you're seeing. I mean someone you truly want to spend life with. Not someone who's wasting your time. I'm not going to go through it. Don't have the time on this podcast. But someone who's there for you. Someone who's showing you that they want to be there for you. Someone who's making that investment. Someone who you say to yourself, actually, in this season right now, I'm going to be vulnerable. And you know what? It may not work out. But if I start this now... It's going to allow me to know how to improve next time. And it's going to build that confidence level. I don't shun away from it. I open myself up for it. So what would I have said to my younger self? Because you know what? I've been so closed off. Imagine only learning what it is to be vulnerable in your late 30s. That's crazy. So to my younger self, I would say, baby girl, in life, you will always make mistakes. But in life, you can always learn from them. Embrace the people that are around you, the people that are for you and lean on those that are leaning on you. So when you are strengthening their rope, they're strengthening your rope. So you're when you're ready to make that deep plunge, you're not going to fall at the end. Because they've tightened that rope and you've tightened that rope. And you trust each other to know when we do this, we're going to enjoy the glide. We're going to enjoy the ride. Because boy, this view is great. This view allows me to see everything. Allows me to smell everything. Feel everything embrace everything it's not always gonna feel great and it doesn't mean you're not gonna feel pain it just means you're willing to take a risk a little bit earlier and you're willing to experience something that's gonna allow you to know this is actually for me or actually this isn't for me so I'm gonna make that decision early enough to know exactly what it is I want and also to know what it I don't want so enjoy the moments of fear enjoy the moments 
where you can be vulnerable because it can only build your confidence, allow you to love yourself and grow the relationships that you've desired to want to grow. Now, I've been talking at you for a little bit. At the end of this podcast, hopefully you was taking notes. I want you to take a moment to download the worksheet from my website, www.thestrivingbutterfly.co.uk. It's all about vulnerability. It's all about taking the steps. Take five, ten minutes to fill it out. If you can't do it all in one go, do what you can and then go back to it. But remember, guys, take a second. And if you need more than a second to hit the control, alt and delete button, because we sometimes need to take a good hold on this, reset ourselves, reposition, realign, declutter to allow ourselves to move forward. Now, a quote that may sum all of this up by Dr. Daniel Block. Inability or unwillingness to be vulnerable in important relationships creates a limit on how much those relationships can evolve and deepen. Vulnerability requires a sense of emotional safety and trust in the other person. Not being vulnerable hampers the development of intimacy in relationships. Don't give up on yourself. You may not be at your best and you may think, I don't even know where to start, but I need you to not give up on that person you have hidden away. If I gave up on myself, I don't think I would be where I am. It may be so lonely, it may feel dark and you may feel isolated and you may be like, no, 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 I am not ready. I don't even know. I'm at my wits end. So I refuse to open myself back up. I need you to take a chance again. I need you to go for it again. The reason for this season is you. We've all been burnt. We've all scarred. We're all battered. We're all bruised. But there is someone and there are people and you've got friends that love all of you. Even the parts that you are not even showing. I want you to dare to be vulnerable. Yes. Say it with me. I'm going to start being vulnerable. I'm going to learn how to be vulnerable. I'm going to learn how to be vulnerable. I'm going to take the next step to be vulnerable. That's it. I'm doing this. Yep. You're doing this. (laughs) You have been listening to the Striving Butterfly podcast. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Colleen underscore Myers. And also the official podcast page, The Striving Butterfly. The resource can be found at www.thestrivingbutterfly.co.uk. And I see you again in a fortnight. Share your reviews, share your comments and keep your head up. If I'm not giving up on you, I don't want you to give up on you. And I did not start this for you to give up. So keep going. Signing out.